that I change the orientation of the area, the flux changes to zero. And then with the other PE field, same thing, the flux changes to zero. Okay? So notice now what flux is measuring. It's not just measuring the E-field strength. It's measuring the E-field strength and how many lines go through a surface. Kind of a combination of the two, you see. Uh, you can almost kind of uh, uh, make an analogy of, the, of it with this uh, scenario. Imagine you have water flowing like this at a rate of, uh, let's say this is water, and the volume flow rate, in physics too you learn about the volume flow rate, is uh, let's say it's uh, 2 liters per second. Okay. Uh, so then you have, uh, you put a sponge perpendicularly to the water. The flux through the sponge would be a description of how wet it's getting, kind of like that. So I'm, uh, that would be the, the electric, that would be the water equivalent of the, the electrical of, uh, scenario. So as the water is getting through that, the sponge would get really wet, right? So flux would describe flux through the sponge would describe uh, how wet it gets. So if I have the same water flow, and then I put a little sponge here, it doesn't get as wet, right? In that case, it's probably not going to get as wet because the surface area is going to be a lot thinner and the, most of the water is going to flow either above it or below it. Only some of the water is going to go through it. Versus if I have the sponge like that, more of the water goes through it, it gets more wet than this. More water goes, flows from the top and bottom, you see. Of course, this is assuming the water doesn't go like that and doesn't go in from the top, you know, uh, if you assume the water flow is straight. So here, the, it gets less wet. So if you want to kind of think about flux, it's sort of a measure of the wetness of the sponge. So now bring that thought over to electric field and say the electric flux is a measure of how the E field saturates the space that it's going through. You see? So that's kind of the analogy. <clears throat> and then I can ask the I can ask what if the the area is tilted? So that could be somewhere let's like, say like this so same area now it's tilted it's tilted uh, let's say uh, 40 degrees 40 degrees from the horizontal let me draw this a little bigger So it's 40 degrees from the horizontal. So now what's the flux going to be? Well, if you think of the sponge analogy, it's probably going to get less wet again. Not as wet as if it's perpendicular, you see. So uh, <clears throat> what would be the flux here? Well, if, it's, uh, if we just know that it's six lines, I can say it's proportional to six lines times the area times what? I have to do the dot product, right? So if the electric field is this way, what's the area vector? The area vector is coming out of the, perpendicularly out of the surface. So what's this angle? Uh, let's see, if this is 40, that would be, uh, let's see. 
if this is the area vector, this is the E field, and this is the surface itself, right? The problem is giving you this is 40. So if that's 40, this is 90 minus 40, this is 40, this is 50. All right? This, this is the surface, this is the horizontal, 40. And then you drew, do the, norm, the, the normal line to the electric field, 40, 50, 40, 50. So the angle between the area vector and the electric field is 50. So you take 6a cosine of 50. This illustrates the fact that you can't just simply look at the angle that the problem is giving and take the cosine of that angle. You can't, if the angle is 20, you can't just simply take the cosine of 20. You've got to analyze the situation, what's going on, right? Uh, you have to take the cosine of the angle between the A and the E. And the reason why that's the case is th you could argue it this way. What if this 40 became 20 and then 10 and then eventually 1 and then eventually 0 degrees, right? So say that it goes down to eventually down to 0. If I took the cosine of 40, if I did it that way, then I took cosine of 20, cosine of 10, and then it went down to 0, cosine of 0, what would the answer be, cosine of 0? 1. So it would mean that if the thing is flat, the flux would be its maximum. The cosine of 0 would be 1. But we know that to be wrong, right? If this thing is flat, what is the flux? Zero. So if you argue from that sense, you can argue to yourself that it's not the cosine of this angle. It's the cosine of the complementary angle to 40. That is what matters. You see? So you took cosine of 50. And then that's the answer, right? So based on whatever angle they give you, you take the cosine of the appropriate angle, and then that's your flux. Okay, now we can extend this idea to flux through a closed surface. Flux through a closed surface. So all, all that means is that now instead of taking a flat surface, now take a three-dimensional surface that's closed in on, in on itself. So in other words, if I take the, I was just simply putting a piece of paper there, right? If I take that paper, give it a third dimension, so I can simply now make it like this. And then have the surface area is going to be 1 again. And let's say the thickness, the width is, uh, let's say, uh, 1. For, let's say it's a cube for the sake of argument. Let's say it's a perfect cube. Now I can ask the question, what's the flux going in from the left side of the surface? What's the flux going in from the right side of the surface, from the top, from the bottom, from, from all of the edges? And then I can add all of the fluxes, and I can find the combined flux of the whole thing, right? So flux uh, left plus flux right plus flux top, bottom, and uh, front and back. And that's going to be flux total. Right? So you can analyze each one separately. So now what happens? Flux uh, top, bottom, uh, front, back is uh, 0. Right? Because uh, the front, back, top, bottom, they're parallel to the field lines. So these ones are all 0. Flux from left is going to be what? Okay, so now the surface is no longer a single.